President-elect Trump tying Monday's terrorist attack at Ohio State University that uh, resulted in uh, wounding of 11 people, tying it to a failed immigration policy. Trump tweeted this, saying ISIS is taking credit for the terrible stabbing attack at Ohio State University by a Somali refugee who should not have been in our country. A source telling Fox News that the suspect, Abdul Artan, traveled to Washington, D.C. late last week before uh, the incident, and that is now a central focus of the FBI investigation. Artan is one of more than 90,000 refugees from Somalia who have been admitted to this country since 2001. Last year, House Speaker Paul Ryan's omnibus spending bill fully funded uh, the president's expanded refugee agenda. Funding visas for nearly 300,000 temporary and permanent Muslim immigrants this year alone. And there is still no commitment from Ryan on a bill introduced by Congressman Brian Babbitt that would place an immediate suspension on immigrants into this country under the refugee resettlement program. The United States is now slated to spend $1.5 billion for refugee processing and resettlement, a 73% increase since Obama took office, and the latest numbers do not include the additional costs associated with the unaccompanied children's program, temporary assistance for needy families, uh, Medicaid, supplemental Social Security. I mean, the list goes on. My next guest is urging the leadership of the House to take up the Babin refugee bill. Joining me now, Congressman Jim Jordan, a member of the Judiciary and Oversight Committees. He's also been the chairman of the Freedom Caucus since its inception. Uh, but has just announced he doesn't plan to seek another term as chairman. Congressman, great to have you with us. Um, yeah, good to be with you, Lou. Th this, is, this is remarkable what is going on. Yep. Uh, th that the House <clears throat> Republicans are uh, on, with that vote on omnibus, fully funding and supporting uh, yeah. the aggressive uh, resettlement uh, initiative of the, of the president, uh, which has led not only to the tragedy uh, of this week, uh, but others, as you know as well, committed by yeah. Somali refugees. That's why we should pass the Babin bill. If we can't pass the Babin bill, go back and pass the other standalone bill that we did last year, which every single Republican supported, 47 Democrats supported. That number is important because that would have got over a veto. Once that bill passed, Harry Reid said, I'll filibuster. Barack Obama said I would veto it. And we wouldn't stand firm and put that legislation on the omnibus, something we conservatives urged our leadership to do. So that bill is clear. 47 Democrats said this problem is so serious. We're willing to pass that legislation. We're willing to vote for that legislation. That's what we should bring up and attach to some must-pass piece of some must-pass legislation, because that could help save American and, and cause uh, uh, prevent harm that has happened to folks like took place earlier this week at, at Ohio State. You know, uh, Congressman Jordan, I haven't heard the White House speak to that attack. Uh, I haven't uh, heard uh, anything but a sort of a rationalization from uh, the local FBI uh, authorities there saying that they can't declare it a terrorist attack, even though ISIS has claimed credit. Uh, and yeah. it's as if there's somebody who's going to be injured if indeed it's referred to as a terrorist attack. It is plainly that. Uh, it, yeah. and, and so I don't, there, this, is, this is an administration that has uh, obfuscated from the inception. But yeah. I don't understand the House leadership. Uh, it, the Speaker Ryan saying he was going to stand tall against uh, uh, yeah. the president-elect on this very issue. Uh, and he hasn't said a word about this attack either. This is awful. Yeah, that's why we have this bill with bipartisan support that should pass. That bill says, unless you are thoroughly checked out, you do not get in, plain and simple. And here's why it's so important. An hour and a half ago, I spoke to one of the victims, the young man who served in Iraq, served in our military, who graduated from our high school with our oldest daughter. I spoke to Andy about what took place. He got cut in the hand, had to have surgery. Yeah. It, that's why this is so important. It has real consequences when we don't do what is plainly just common sense. That's all we're asking. So the Babin legislation or the Hudson legislation that passed the House already, either one of those could help in the future, maybe preventing some of these similar attacks from happening. And the reason it's so important is people like the kid from our high school who has served our country, who had to go through surgery because he was stabbed by this what, what surely looks like a terrorist.
Let me ch uh, change subject, and that is to a peculiar sure. uh, remark by uh, Kevin McCarthy, the majority leader, commenting that the Republican brass don't plan to kowtow to the conservatives anymore. Uh, I guess that reads Freedom Caucus as well in there, and forecast a less influential Freedom Caucus and a, and frankly, a, uh, a, a an establishment uh, that has a free hand because of the election of Donald Trump. Do you suppose Kevin McCarthy has just missed the entire point of the past uh, uh, year and a half? Well, here's what I know, Lou. The Freedom Caucus was formed as a, a group to take on the establishment in this town and fight for regular working class, middle class families. Along comes a candidate who's now the president elect who ran a campaign to stand up for working class and middle class families and take on the establishment. And somehow, because all that took place, the relevance and influence of the Freedom Caucus is diminished. I think most people would say no. I think that just reinforces that we were on the right track. We were fighting for the right things. And where Donald Trump is pushing for those very things the voters sent us here to do, he's going to have us helping in every way we can to make sure they happen. My bigger concern is the establishment has a way of taking good ideas that the American people want done, like what we just got through talking about. The establishment has a way of watering all those down and preventing the very things that people elected us to do to get done. That's my big concern, and that's why we have to focus on doing what we told the voters we would do, doing what they sent us here to do. If we do that, we're going to have the country back on the right path and do things that make just good common sense and help everyone across, across this great nation. I, well, first of all, I, I cheer your, your suggestion, and I, I hope that you will concur with mine, which is that the House of Representatives, including, if not especially, its leadership understand that it's not about the quote unquote better way agenda of its speaker, but rather about the America first, make America great again agenda of the man this uh, country just elected president. It's about the American people. It's not about personality, it's not about anything. It's about the American people who sent us here to do yeah. certain things that we campaigned on. If we focus on that, then we'll get America right back on the right path, which is good for everybody. Uh, let me see if we're fencing on something. I mean, we are in agreement that it will be the president's agenda, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, when it comes to securing the border, when it comes to throwing no, out no, the tax No, no. I mean, it's going to be his agenda. Tax. Putting Americans first, putting America first, making America great again. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, You're exact. Putting the American people first is exactly what we have to focus on. That's what Donald Trump campaigned on. That's what we campaigned on. Let's make sure we do that. You got it. Congressman? I look forward to seeing you again soon, and good luck. You bet. You've got a Thank tall, you. tall order there in front of you, as you well know. Thanks, Thanks so much. Luke.